Well, Cisco has done it again. Let me give you the flyby of what's new in the CCNA 2013. I look back at my notes, and the last major revision that Cisco did to the CCNA program was back in 2007 when they took the one CCNA and broke it into the ICND-1 and ICND-2 certification exams. Now they've added more. ICND-1 includes more subnetting, to where now instead of one subnet mask to rule them all, they introduce variable length subnet mask even at the outset of subnetting. More depth, they've added topics like network address translation, access control lists, and VLANs, which typically were in ICND2. Now, they were in ICND1, but it was more like a hint of. As a matter of fact, NAT was configured, but only through this, the uh, security device manager, the GUI, the graphic interface that Cisco has to manage their device. Now, that has gone completely away. The death, I say the death of SDM, but essentially the, the graphic way of configuring a Cisco device has moved out. It's it's all command line now. Now they've added more modern technology. OSPF has been introduced rather than RIP. RIP, rest in peace, is still going to be around. It's still, I mean, it made the jump even to IP version 6 with RIP next generation, but good grief. Who in the world uses RIP anymore? Uh, they've added more future to where now they're covering a little bit of IPv6, even in the introductory certification ICND1 or CCENT, you're going to get some IPv6 exposure. More on that in ICND2. Now, what did they take out? Well, they took out a lot of what I call taste testing technologies, meaning they would add some wireless, some Wi-Fi to the CCENT certification, but it's kind of like, well, it's just enough to be dangerous. Did you know that overlapping wireless coverage is a good thing and channels and I mean, just, just enough to where you're like, oh, okay, I have a general idea. Well, they said, well, you know what? No more. There's a, there's a dedicated certification program for that. Same thing with security. There's like taste testing on security. Now, of course, you're like, well, isn't accessless security? No, accessless is like the core of everything in Cisco. Everything requires an accessless for security and beyond. Um, they got rid of some of the duplicated information. For instance, serial links used to be introduced in ICND1, then brought in again in IC ICND2 when they talked about WAN connections. So ICND1 really stays at the home location. So you're talking single site is the focus, but a lot more depth at that single site. Now you might ask, has there been enough removed from ICND1 to make up for the stuff that they've added here? Uh, no, there is not. There is a higher barrier of entry into the ICND1 program now than there used to be uh, in the old flavor. Uh, you have to know more, learn more. And you might say, why, th why are they doing that? I have a couple theories. One is that technology is now more mainstream. People are getting into Cisco even in high school. There's classes that you can take that take you into Cisco certification and Cisco technology. Also, Cisco is realizing a lot of people are taking the CCNA and stopping. They're not going on to the CCNP. So Cisco is saying, well, you know what? If you're going to have a mainstream Cisco accreditation, you're really going to know what you're you're doing. And I would say ICND-1, after after seeing what's ha what's been added to it, I would say, yeah, you really do have a good idea of what's going on when you get that CCENT certification. Now, what about ICND-2? ICND-2, the main thing that's been added is a whole lot of troubleshooting. There's different levels of knowledge that you can get. You can say, well, can you explain the technology? Well, okay, great, you can. Okay, can you configure the technology? It's kind of like one beyond explaining it. Well, okay, you can. The last one would then be, can you troubleshoot the technology? Can you not only know how it works, not only know how to configure it in kind of a green field, clean slate setup, but also can you tell if something's wrong with it and how to fix it? So ICND2 really goes into troubleshooting of all technology, switching, routing, uh, access control, a lot of troubleshooting on, on everything. Uh, more switching has been added, more on spanning tree protocol, more on ether channel. Ether channel wasn't even in the CCNA program to begin with. Uh, this is where you really see a lot being added, more routing, a lot of depth to EIGRP, uh, multi area OSPF used to be a CCNP only. Matter of fact, it used to be ICND1 was RIP and ICND2 was OSPF introduction. Now they said RIP is gone, goodbye, and we're adding multi-area OSPF, which is summarization, really design of OSPF. There's a lot of topics that go into that, as well as OSPF version 3, which is going to be the OSPF for IPv6 has been added to ICND2. Uh, more management. Now this was something that I would say was weak in the Cisco certification program overall. It's like a day-to-day -day lifeblood of an administrator that was always overlooked. SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, to be able to see what the Cisco devices are doing, not only if they're up or not, but also how much bandwidth is being used, what response times they're getting. Syslog, so it can report to a server uh, if something is down, notify you, send a page, whatever the case is. NetFlow, so you can go in depth. So you can say, okay, I see my bandwidth is maximized. Who's doing it? 
It's the dude watching YouTube over there in the cubicle. Shut him down. You know, he can really get into uh, what's going on inside of the bandwidth with NetFlow. And then finally, Cisco has upgraded all the iOS versioning and, and explanations to iOS 15, where they really rolled out a whole new iOS licensing. You can't just throw whatever iOS on the router and it works anymore. It has to be licensed and activated, essentially, before uh, those features will work for you. So they've added a lot of scandal prevention to ICD2 so that you can understand and know the iOS. OS licensing. If you'd like to get more depth on what's new, come on over to cbtnuggets.com, open up these series, and you'll be able to see every single video that we've recorded for them and even start watching them. I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing.